What are intraocular lenses? And why do we need them as patients? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Nabila Gomez will explain what IOLs are, what the different options are, what they are made of, and her successful pre-op and post-op protocols. Dr. Gomez? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Nabila Gomez. Dr. Gomez, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Dr. Gomez. Uh, so before we get into our discussion today, I was kind of hoping you can introduce yourself to our audience, let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. Hi, everyone. My name is Navila Gomez. I'm a practicing optometrist here in Austin, Texas. I am originally from Ecuador, and I moved to Miami in my teenage years. I went to Nova Southeastern College of Optometry, and I completed an ocular disease residency at Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. Following the residency, I started my job here in Austin, Texas, uh, the practice called Dell Laser Consultants, where I currently practice. And there I started specializing in pre and post cataract and refractive care, and also ocular surface disease, including dry eye disease. Well, fantastic introduction, Dr. Gomez. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, so for our discussion, Dr. Gomez, we were hoping that you could discuss with us refractive uh, intraocular surgery and lenses. So why would someone need refractive uh, intraocular surgery? So traditionally, patients who needed refractive intraocular surgery had cataracts. Cataracts are the clouding of the natural lens. But nowadays, because of advanced technology, not only the patients who have cataracts are able to have this lens, they're able to, to get this lens because it's going to help them see better at distance, intermediate, and up close. So, you know, in patients who have cataract surgery, they will have blur vision that will not be correctable with spectacle correction or with contact lenses. But these other patients that have a clear lens are able to be glasses independent from having the surgery. Perfect. And um, so could you uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, intraocular lenses? Uh, so what are they? So they are small, very tiny artificial lenses that replace a natural lens that it gets removed during cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange surgery. The surgeon will choose the power of this lens based on the corneal power and the axial length of the eye. The cornea is the front structure in the eye. Well, fantastic. And so um, who usually needs uh, like these IOLs? Who, who's, who's the uh, you know, prime candidate for, for these? So patients who have blur vision from cataracts or also patients who just want to minimize their need for glasses, they have refractive errors. They also have become presbyopic, which means that they can no longer see up close and they just want to literally ditch those reading glasses. Fantastic information, Dr. Gomez. And uh, what are different lens options available for people like who are getting IOLs? Are there, are there different lens options for, for those uh, patients? Okay, so there are many lens options. Uh, the, the most traditional option is the monofocal lens, which will correct vision at one distance only. So it will be either far away or up close. And uh, for example, so if the patient gets corrected for distance vision, they will need glasses for near work. And if they get corrected for near, they will need glasses for distance. So it has only one fo focusing power. You can use this lens to do monovision where you correct one eye for distance and the other eye for near. That way they have the best of both worlds. However, this takes some adaptation period and not everyone is a good candidate for this. So what we do is trial at first with a contact lens to see if this will be a good fit. Then we have the toric lenses that correct for astigmatism. You also have the multifocal lenses that will correct for distance and up close. You have the trifocal lens that will correct for distance, mid range and up close. And now we have the extended depth of focus lens, which 
will give you an extended focal point. So you have distance vision and also mid-range vision. And the most exciting technology nowadays is a light adjustable lens, which is a one of its kind. It's very unique because you can also, once the cataract surgery is done, you can trial, custom, and design your vision after cataract surgery. It is very exciting technology. It is a photosensitive lens. So it will respond to UV light. So there's a series of UV treatments that are done to change the refractive error. Well, that is very cool. That is excellent technology, Dr. Gomez. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I think you actually touched on it maybe a little bit at the beginning, but I wanted to ask you, um, what are interocular, intraocular lenses made of? Uh, are, are they all the same or are, are they all made uh, like different? So most IOLs are made of silicon, acrylic, and other plastic compositions, and they all have UV protection. Awesome. That, 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 uh, thank you for answering that. I appreciate that. And uh, so how long does this, uh, the IOL typically last? Is it, is it the same for everybody? Is it, is it different? So the IOL implant is permanent. So the patient will have it for the rest of their life. Well, well, fantastic. And, and uh, so, uh, what uh, will they need to be? Uh, so they, they won't be the need to be replaced over time. Once they have it, it's it's permanent. Right. Once they have the lens, it's permanent. They don't need to be replaced. I mean, in some rare occasions, we'll exchange a lens because the patient was not able to tolerate some of the halos and rings that come with the multifocal designs. Well, fantastic information, Dr. Gomez. And um, so what are like the pre-op uh, protocols for patients who are getting like intraocular lenses? Is, is there a regimen that they need to go, go with for after they check up with you? Right. So, you know, they will obviously do the comprehensive exam. We will be assessing the ocular health and setting realistic expectations based on their ocular health, right? Because some people may have retinal issues, uh, other conditions that may uh, limit their vision after cataract surgery. So it's also important to assess the cornea to make sure that the surface, the ocular surface doesn't have any cornea, you know, irregularities or dry disease. If they do, we'll definitely address those things prior to surgery. Fantastic. And so uh, we talked a little bit about it, but how important is it to having proper like pre-op conditions for like the eyes and the eyelids? So, um, you know, from what I mentioned earlier, like the surgeon will choose the power of the lens based on the cornea and the axial length. The cornea becomes a very, very important parameter for the success of the patient. So it is very important to address that ocular surface, make sure that the tear film is very stable, that is optimized. And with that comes also eyelid health, eyelid hygiene. So I recommend most of my patients to start eyelid hygiene before surgery and also do a, a regimen with drops to make sure that we're optimizing that surface. Well, that's fantastic here. Eyelid hygiene is very important. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. And um, so I wanted to ask you, after the surgery, how long does this uh, the recovery process typically last after the procedure? Is it different for everybody else? I'm assuming everyone's different, but I, I, I was wondering if there was maybe a ballpark or maybe just a, a, a normal timeline for recovery. So um, generally, patients take about three months to heal. The majority of patients will we will, will notice an improvement in their vision and the colors like the day after surgery. And it will get really good about a week after. So it's just a, a fact of sometimes people heal slower, some people heal faster, and we are there to to you know to encourage them and give them all the tools that they need to to maximize their healing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Gomez. And uh, so what about like post-op procedures? Uh, like what are your recommendations uh, for like right after the IOL surgery? And how, like what are the long-term post-op care that, sh that a patient should be take care of? So in immediately after surgery, the patient needs to be on three drops, an antibiotic, an esteroidal anti-inflammatory, and a non-esteroidal anti-inflammatory. In our practice, we combine all three ingredients into one bottle, so it makes it easier for the patient. And we have them do this for about four weeks. Once that's done, they're done with the, you know, with the medical drops. And then we are also, during all this time, making sure that the dry eye is taken care of. So they continue their dry eye therapy. The eyelid hygiene, I'll stop right after surgery because I don't want them to rub their eyes. So that will get started again two to three weeks after surgery. 
Awesome. Excellent. And uh, so I know you talked about, we talked just a little bit about it earlier too. I just wanted to ask again, how important after the surgery, you know, post-op, how important is eyelid hygiene uh, play, play a factor in all of this? So eyelid hygiene will help support and improve the tear film uh, that will help improve vision and maximize healing success. It's going to make the dry, the, the dry eye drop regime much more effective. Excellent. Thank you for that information, Dr. Gomez. And uh, before we leave our conversation today, was there anything else that you'd like to let our audience know about? Um, yes. So refractive intraocular surgery is just an amazing opportunity to restore and improve your vision. And I really enjoy seeing patients one day after the surgery because they already appreciate vis visual improvements. They can tell me that they can see colors, that everything is just brighter. And uh, it's really uh, satisfying to see the process from beginning to end, and it just makes me love what I do. Well, that's awesome that you love what you do, and that's great to hear, and I'm glad that you get to help all your patients like that. Uh, fantastic, Dr. Gomez. Everyone, that was Dr. Nabila Gomez. Dr. Gomez, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me, Nick.